question. If not, I will use that as my water break and we'll carry on. All right, so we're gonna talk through those three pieces and then we'll get into the, the data um, or the products. And so, uh, as you guys know, Great Plains Tribal Treatments Health Corps runs a multi multitude of programs. One of them you can see in the bottom left corner of this logic model is the Good Health and Wellness Program. So we're gonna spend just a minute talking through what that logic model looks like. And so the inputs, right? That's the first layer of things that we think about when we think about the logic of the program. What are we putting into the program if we think about it as an equation, what are we putting in, right? Uh, so things like tribal government and leadership, your staff time, Jennifer and Emily's staff time, um, the other people at the health board, we're putting in these action plans, we're putting in and learning from evidence-based interventions, and ultimately we're putting in some funding too, right? We're pushing this thing forward. Um, so these are the things we're putting into the program. These are the things we're doing with those inputs, right? We're doing assessments of tribal capacity. We're looking around the community and seeing where those opportunities are. Um, we're communicating our goals and our uh, health promotion activities. We're implementing these interventions. We're doing walking clubs. We're building gardens. Uh, we're providing technical assistance and trainings. Um, and then hopefully we're developing some policy and some regulation that will help these things continue forward. So these are those outputs. These are the actual activities that you're doing in the hopes of these outcomes, right? And so one to three years, um, short term, medium term, and long term, we know that these things that we do today will have an impact tomorrow, but we also hope they have an impact three years and five years and seven years down the road. And so from the start, right, this is the logic model. This is the first thing that you're doing. You're thinking not only one to three years, what is the outcome going to be, but further down the road, how are these things going to continue to grow and snowball into something bigger? Um, so this text might be a little small, and I apologize for that. Um, but if we look at the short-term outcomes, we're thinking about increased implementation. We're thinking about um, development of strategies to promote chronic disease prevention. We're looking at increased involvement, greater partnerships and communication. Um, if we're looking at the medium term, so now we're talking a few years down, which we're actually in now, four to six years down the road, we're thinking about PSE improvements, right? Those policy systems and environments that many of you are, are working on. We're thinking about and aiming for these increased community clinical linkages, um, increasing this partnership and these collaboratives in order to promote chronic disease prevention um, over the long term. And then ultimately, seven to 10 years, if we hit, the, if we continue to input these things and do these activities as outcomes, uh, we hope that we'll reduce the rate of death and disability due to chronic disease, due to commercial tobacco. And so this is the way that the, the logic of the program is structured, right? We are gonna do these things um, we're going to track these metrics, and we're going to hope in several years that this is true. Um, most programs, some things are true, some things are not. And so as you get to that point, we are now about in year five, you get to reflect back and think, okay, what are those data pieces? What are those activities that led to this outcome? Or why did we miss this potential outcome? And you begin to reflect back and improve moving forward. And so that's kind of the arch of evaluation. That's tool number one. And I'm going to should not forget this, the context, right? Again, I talked about this a few minutes ago. If we do evaluation in isolation, if we pretend like there aren't um, cultural, human, uh, geographical, uh, political influences on what we do, we're never gonna learn anything, right? These things absolutely impact the way that things unfold. And so putting these in from the outset of understanding that federal policies and practices are gonna influence the work that we're all doing. Um, small community sizes and shift in populations and demographics is going to impact these things. Um, grassroots movement, right? This is a community-oriented work. You guys are all out in the community big, building these partnerships and these coalitions um, to do some of this work. And so those things influence um, the outcomes, the inputs, and the outputs um, as we go around the logic model. The second piece um, that probably is the bane of many of your existence, and I apologize for that. I'm the guy advocating for these to be filled out every year, uh, is this evaluation plan. And so to start to think through what are we hoping to do this next year and how can we begin to think about what data needs to be collected in order to reflect at the end of whether or not, um, not only did we do it, but potentially how well did we do it or could we have improved it or what pieces as we sit back a year from now 
reflecting back in the past year, what did we do and how did that work? Um, so continuing to put these pieces in place so that we know what we're going to collect, we're going to know who's going to review it, when it's going to be connected, and what that result might tell us. Um, so this is, uh, I know many of you have seen this before and filled this out. Uh, this is another backbone of evaluation. It's one of the three core documents. Um, the Tribal Chairman's Health Board has one like this that they're submitting to CDC on a pretty regular um, rhythm. And uh, this is a very simplified version. The, the CDC asks for kind of a, a huge number of data points. And much of the data that you'll see in this next piece, this progress report, populates that report. Um, so then finally, the data of it, right? We've done the planning, the logic model. We've done the, the evaluation plan. We know what we're collecting. Now let's put that all together in one place. And so as one grantee, you have this full document of kind of what went on throughout the year. What were the successes? What were the challenges? Who did we reach? Um, what policies were implemented? But then from the Travel Chairman's Health Board perspective, we've got 12 to 14 of these reports depending on the year. And that gives a pretty good slice of information, right? We know what activities are happening. We know who's being reached. We know how those tax and tax are being used what the key lessons being learned and it allows um, kind of refined and tailored support to be offered uh, throughout the process and then ultimately a lot of this data that you guys are submitting um, is going into the next couple of documents that you'll see right uh, the data that you provide us um, then gets analyzed and crunched and cleaned and reviewed and summarized and then goes to cbc and uihi in a variety of forms and ultimately um, gets summarize for the health board themselves so that they can continue to improve on the support that they offer. So we'll get into a few of those things. I said that good health and wellness is complicated and I think this graph um, you probably have seen before. I know Nicole's talked about this previously but I think that this is a good centering point before we get into the specific products. Um, and so just to orient ourselves, um, if you're a sub-awardee of the good health uh, of the Great Plains Travel Chairman's Health Board, you are in the center um, there in the, we'll call it mustard yellow, um, under C2, right? The health board is C2, and then you are a sub -ordy. C1s are tribes directly funded um, by CDC. The orange ring around that, you've got the tribal epidemiology centers. You've got these techs and these regional service areas that are providing additional TA um, in forms of kind of providing access to data, um, providing some technical assistance and evaluation framework help. Um, outside of that, you've got that kind of light green teal color, and that's Urban Indian Health Institute. Uh, for the purpose of this project, they're the national coordinating um, evaluator, and so they've developed lots of um, cross-site measures and tools that each of the individual C1 and C2 grantees are reporting the data out to, and so they're doing a lot of that national data crunching and review and summarizing and then ultimately handing that to CDC, who is the project oversight, they're the funder, they're the ones um, providing the structure for everything that's happening interior to that. Uh, and so you can kind of begin to see these layers of evaluation and feedback, and these um, channels of communication are very important, uh, because if CDC doesn't know what's happening all the way down at the sub awardee level, um, they're not really able to learn or grow or continue to offer support in years uh, moving forward. And so. UIHI has developed these very clear metrics in order to help these other uh, uh, bodies understand what's happening. Um, the one other thing you'll see kind of poked in the middle there is the Project ECHO. Um, this is a peer-to-peer -peer learning network, and so the C1s and C2s meet monthly in order to talk, things, to talk about things like evaluation. What are you guys collecting? How are you doing that? Uh, what things are working well in your um, region of the country? What's not working well? What events are you hoping to go to? Uh, what tools have you developed? And so that's happening um, on a monthly basis and uh, fairly rigorously on a monthly basis that there's some communication across grantees going um, similar to the way that um, the Good Health and Wellness grantees here in the Great Plains meet monthly to talk about these things in formats like this. So that's a little bit of what we're going on. The next couple of documents that I'm going to talk about um, our snapshot here and we'll jump online here to look at them in a minute but the top left document uh, was developed by ACID it's an internal report given to the health board at the end of every uh, fiscal year um, and it includes things from your, your progress reports it includes interviews that we've done with you um, we interview 
the health board staff themselves, Jennifer and Emily here on the call today, provide their feedback and their reflection on what's happened in this last year. And then ACID um, takes that all together and summarizes it and said, here's kind of what we're learning, here's what you've done, and here's some opportunities moving forward um, as a way of kind of tracking that over years. The document on the right is developed by CDC. It's a snapshot of what's being done across the nation. We'll dive into that a little bit further. And then you can see on the bottom left there, UIHI, they've developed a number of um, tools and elements that we'll dive into. So I'm going to go off PowerPoint and I'm hoping that you can all read this okay. Um, so I'm happy to provide all of this information afterwards, but this is uh, all hosted online um, from here on out. And so I just wanna share the data that you guys are all providing, the information that you're all plugging away at every uh, month and every year is going somewhere, right? People are listening, people are doing things with this. Um, and so here's kind of a little view of what it is. So we're gonna start at CDC, then we'll go to UIHI, and then we'll go all the way down to the asset level. Um, so CDC, right, this is their, their homepage. Um, we're on Healthy Tribes, and so this brings together a number of resources um, and grants or projects um, that they're working on with Indian Country. Um, so you can see Healthy Tribes here, navigate back, um, and then they've got a number of different projects that they're supporting. Uh, the one that we're all working under is the Good Health and Wellness in Indian Country. And so they give a little snapshot, right? They're providing this huge national overview um, of the money invested, of the length of time um, that they're going, and then kind of dive in real high level about what's happening. Um, and this is used for advocacy at their level, right? When they're petitioning for funds to continue this work. Um, so again, these long-term goals of reducing death and disability, of reducing the prevalence of obesity, um, reducing disability from diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. Uh, again, evaluation, evaluation, evaluation. They're talking about it here and how that's structured. Um, and then they dive into some specific program activities. So they go all the way from high level, here's the dollar amount over five years, here are the structure of the project, and then they dive into, here are some of the things happening. So you can kind of toggle these each open and learn just a paragraph or two around what some of the work is. And so you may recognize the Lower Gruel here. Lower Gruel Tribal Council um, adopted a policy, and so they talked about the administrative leave in order to um, encourage attendance at a diabetes prevention program. And so they talk about that um, right here. And then Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska, a C1 grantee, you can also see some of the work that they are doing. Um, and so this is all the way up at the CDC level that they're advocating for these things, um, talking about the work that's being done. And this is ultimately pulled from the, the information that you guys are all providing um, in consultation with the health board and then all the way up to CDC. Uh, in 2016, and I apologize that this is a little dated now, um, my, I imagine that they're working on an updated one of these. Um, this is a four page kind of snapshot, they call it, right? At a glance from um, Good Health and Wellness in Indian Country. So if we think back to 2016, that's two years into the project, knowing that it started in 2014. So you'll see some of the same information from that previous page, some kind of quick facts of why this project, why this work, um, what is the background, and so you see the public health problem, right? Why this funding is important. And so they kind of go through, if you think about a research paper of establishing, uh, you've got your abstract up here, you've got your problem, and then you'll talk about your methodology and your findings, and so they've structured it that way, right? Because that's what their audience is used to reading. Um, so you can see the response, you can see the specific methods and methodologies that they're using, um, funding 12 tribes, um, and then, uh, so 11 tribal organizations providing leadership technical assistance. I'm over on the right side here. These 11 tribe, tribal organizations, one of which, which is the Good Health, and, or Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board, is then offering up to 100 tribes. And so those 11 that are structured down, um, and they've got a cool graphic of that down below, but it begins to give you a little bit of insight to some of the work that is happening at this national level without getting too bogged down in any specific details, but giving a good overarching summary. So again, I believe Lower Brule is highlighted in this um, to a little greater extent on the previous page. Um, oh, and the map isn't in this document. It must be in the next one. So this is what CDC, and this is available on their website publicly as well. Um, so again, back to the outside ring, this is what CDC is doing. Then if we go one inside, um, we can look at UIHI. And so this is, um, they're a division of the Seattle Indian Health Board. They're the national evaluator um, contracted for this project. And so they're looking at 
the metrics and establishing um, measures and numbers and reporting criteria and forms and documents um, in order to collect all of this information from all of these moving pieces. Um, and so they've done a few really interesting things um, with this information. So you can see they've got this GWIC story map that we'll look at a second in a second, this evaluation organizational chart, which is that circular diagram that we looked at a minute ago. And then they've developed a few links and references, one pagers, two pagers kind of reports that can be shared out on specific topics. Um, so the GWIC story map, you may have heard about once or twice, that's what this is here. Um, and it's built around this mapping technology. So ArcGIS, if anybody's familiar. Um, and so on the left side here, you kind of get the narrative, you get the story of what's happening, um, as well as some images. And I'll just scroll down here and you can see how it kind of changes in a similar format of describing the problem, describing the work being done. Um, and so they talk about the types of things happening. And then we get to see the grantees, right? And so I, this image I think is powerful and you'll see this show up a number of different places. Um, but these are the different funding uh, funded organizations as a result as a result of this good health and wellness in Indian country. So you can see um, on my left here, you can see it as a static. On the right, um, we can zoom in and look kind of region by region. And so uh, let's go to the Great Plains area here. And you can see kind of at the core, um, some of these different organizations spread out across the Great Plains region and the different funding opportunities um, with the colors corresponding over here. But it just gives you a good breadth of the work happening right across the country um, throughout this. And so you can highlight specifically the tribes that are involved, the tribal organizations that are involved, and then uh, the tech centers that are working on this project. And so this is a pretty dynamic tool. A lot of people have used this and kind of customized it for their different individual reports um, to be able to share out some of this information. Uh, based on what they're interested in. And then they talk about the different strategy areas, right? We know about the nutrition and physical activity that many of you are working on, and so they highlight a few stories. Um, we can look at type 2 diabetes control, um, and you can see the lower bill story again uh, mapped out here with some of their key information and some of the work they're doing. Um, so it's a pretty dynamic tool that they've used, uh, UIHI has developed in order to share out some of this information. Certainly not the flat traditional evaluation report that many of us are used to, um, but it's a way that those stories and that data that you guys are all providing is ultimately getting shared out nationally um, with, with those interested. This link has been shared out with, for sure, everybody involved in the project um, and is often referenced outside of this project of an example of some of the work happening at a national level. Um, so this is kind of the interactive story map. They've also developed a couple of kind of concise, well, this one is not concise, but we'll start here. So this is their uh, February 2017 um, progress report for the entire project. And so uh, I'm going to zoom down to the table of contents just so you can, can kind of get a see of what things they're talking about here. Again, it's a 20 page document, um, but you've got kind of the executive summary of talking about some of the uh, establishing work and background information and then diving into some of the activities and the findings. Um, so we're gonna go straight down to the component two findings because I think that's where we'll be able to see ourselves in some of the data. So I apologize, this is gonna be hard to look at for a second until I get down there. So here we are, what did component two grantees do during the first two years? Um, so they've kind of summarized those activities that you all and your other national partners um, have done so some of these key numbers being pulled out c2s helped at least 157 communities across the country complete these community health assessments um, and a total of 101 tribes and tribal organizations were awarded grants and so again these are filtering down through organizations like the health board um, and then they've got a few of these key stories pulled out i'm going to scroll down a little bit more here and show you a few more key numbers that they pull out they've got some specific stories pulled out Got some images, here's that map again of kind of looking at the work done at the national level. And then they've got, let's see. So then they've got some of these graphs and these figures and so types of technical assistance, right, provided to subawardees. And so this really allows um, both from the national level, CDC, UIHI, and the health board to understand what is needed from these subawardees. Where is that help um, able to support the biggest push? And so. Um, we think about things like implementation support, right? The day-to-day -day activities, how to run some of these programs, what things are helpful, um, data support, how do we connect data, where are we getting data from? That's where those travel epidemiology centers come big into play. 
um, resource development, subject specific offerings. And so you begin to filter through and this really allows that program planning to happen over the next couple of years. And so these are the types of activities happening. And then again, looking forward, knowing that this was after two years of the project, what's next? And so they touch on a key, a couple of key pieces on there. So that's their big 20 page report. They've got a concise two page here on commercial tobacco. Um, so they kind of talk about why commercial tobacco is important, um, how they are measuring the GWIC impact. Uh, and then I think they've got a couple of fantastic numbers, which I think is something else. Um, so 12 number of tribal settings with commercial tobacco cessation programs up from three, just two years prior to this. And so that's a fourfold increase. Um, 165 policies implemented on prohibiting smoking in public places. That's up from 25, and so that's, oh boy, you're gonna put me on the spot. That's a five to 7% increase. Uh, don't call me out on that. I'm regretting that this is being recorded. But you can see the work that's being done in those pieces that you guys are all reporting and how that information gets shared out at a national level. Um, so again, a couple of just key facts here, some of the baseline visits to cumulative visits, uh, and that trustee map that I keep talking about helping to visualize how that work is happening across the nation. Um, and then a few lessons learned. So again, this is UIHI. It's all publicly available on their website. I'm happy to share that information uh, in the chat, or it's certainly in this PowerPoint that we're talking about. And then the last thing that I'm gonna spend maybe five or six minutes talking through, I apologize, I'm gonna scroll to the top. Please don't get dizzy. Um, is the report that we've developed um, internally at ASSET using the, specifically the data that you all have provided through interviews, through events, through photos, through interviews, um, progress reports, uh, as well as some of the information that the health board has tracked over the, over the year of the project. And so this specifically covers the 2017 to 2018 um, information collected. So I'll just take a few minutes and scroll through a few of the highlights of this document. Um, so again, Similar to the other ones, this is a traditional flat evaluation report, right? It's a piece of paper rather than a dynamic map. And so we provide some of that kind of contextual information about why this is important. Um, the, the specific structure of the project, right? So you can see yourselves um, represented in this map. Um, the two tiers of funding, uh, let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, we'll get there in a second. And the different components that are required, right? The, the tax, the defining of the community population, uh, this evaluation plan, thank you everybody for doing that with me every year, um, reporting the reach and documenting the outcomes, and then ultimately implementing that evaluation plan um, and completing our progress report. So this, I think, is a cool figure. If you look at the blue bars in one and two, those are the community health assessments, right? That's going out into the community and understanding what's being done. And the project was specifically structured that you either had one done recently or that was kind of the first year of funding. And so you can see how then year one and two, that's where a lot of time was spent. And then as years two, three, and four increase, that's where a lot of that funding and a lot of those activities are spent on PSE um, projects. And so you begin to see that shift from kind of assessment over to implementation throughout the years of the project. And in year five, we'll again see everybody working on PSE, which is pretty unique um, to see that many organizations, that many tribal um, partners working on implementing policy systems and environmental changes. So as we continue to go through here, um, we pull out a few of the key, key findings. And so talking about the support and the training that Good Health and Wellness is providing to the subawardees, pulling out a few specific examples, um, tracking things like in-person consultation, consultation by phone or web. Um, these webinars themselves, I believe, is the next big one. Um, Looking back, that form that you all have diligently filled out for the 2018 symposium and every other symposium, we take time and we reflect on those things. And so you can see that included in the report here of, of what, was, what was said, what was shared, um, what information was gained, how we use this information. And those are used to then plan um, future projects and lean into some of those specific activities that are being pulled out from your words um, in these reports. Uh, the community health webinar series, right? We're on, we're on July's right now, and so uh, potentially we'll all show up in next year's report. Um, but again, we're taking time to review this, and so uh, the highest attended webinar, um, whether or not we're meeting people's expectations, what, what things are going well, are people being allowed to ask questions? Um, I'll scroll through this quickly and get down to these graphs for us. Um, so again, are people being offered opportunities to ask questions 
um, share their opinions. It was well planned. It was culturally relevant. We're asking these things not just to have numbers, but to begin to think about what can we do differently? How can we continue to tailor these so that they can be useful? Um, so we do this not only webinar by webinar, but also across the year. And so this is looking at all of the figures or all of the results from the entire year of webinars of how we think about that. Um, so we kind of divide it into two. These are capacity building um, things like uh, prescription programs or evaluation or implementation plan. And then these are health related things like um, healthy eating or fruit guide. And so what are the differences? And so you can kind of see some of the differences here. Um, and it, it helps us and the health board think about the planning of all of these. Um, and so hopefully we see these trending up, but it's a good way to keep us accountable and make sure that um, we're still providing helpful services. Uh, and then this page here really gets into the numbers and some of those key findings. So those progress reports, we are going through those with a fine tooth comb. CDC wants that information, but it's really helpful for the health board too, the Great Plains Travel Chairman's Health Board, um, establishing a reach, understanding how those advisory councils are coming into play, what partnerships are available, right? Uh, in year five, which we're in, wrapping up here, we're going to think a lot about sustainability and partnerships are huge for that, right? And so beginning to think about how can we leverage those partnerships um, that you guys are all sharing satisfaction with, um, evaluation plans, talking about the community health assessments and those PSE changes. Um, and then a few quotes from those interviews that you guys were willing to conduct with us. Um, all helps inform the work um, so that the health board can provide better services moving forward. But this is also going to CDC so that they understand what funding mechanisms are helpful. Where is that need? Um, what things are working well, how can we continue to offer support and funding um, to these tribal organizations to make differences in their community. Uh, many of you have seen these, many of you have these. Um, if you don't, please let me know. I want to get these in your hands, but these are the success stories. So we take time analyzing each progress report and interview and putting together a one page on. Here's what went really well with this tribal organization this year. And so you can see some photos, some of the interviews, um, you guys have these, I'm gonna scroll down so that I can wrap up and answer any questions. Uh, the last thing that we talk about, let me get one more. Uh, the last thing that we talk about, right, is successes, challenges, and opportunities moving forward. And so what went well in this past year, right? The symposium went really well. The specific, culturally specific materials went really well. The community health webinar series went well. People responded highly to these things. Um, so we want to keep doing these things and make small tweaks so that they continue uh, to be helpful policy implementation, right? This last year, there was a lot of that, and we expect some more um, to be coming through in those progress reports in this year. Um, you can see a few of those policy successes called out here. Um, challenges, right? No project is without challenges, and if we don't address them and talk about them, they're gonna continue. So staff turnover, um, both at the health board and in subawardy organizations is hard, right? When we're getting new people up to speed, I'm sure you've all experienced this, um, it's just, it takes a little bit of time. It's a shift of focus. It's a shift of energy. Um, funding is limited. It can only be used for certain things. Policy implementation takes time. It's not an overnight thing where we would all have done it yesterday, uh, but it's that continuing work of how to move forward. Um, and then as we look, so this is reflecting back. So this was written in year four. So this is the opportunities for today, for year five, right? Policy development. Um, continued program growth, sharing and documenting impact, the things that we're doing, the things you just did with the success stories, um, and then continuing to look for funding opportunities. What are those other things out there that may help continue this work moving forward? Um, so this is what we put together for the health board and we sit down and reflect on um, at the end of each year, and we will again do it this year to be able to understand what went well, what was done, and what can maybe be improved moving forward. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a quick overview. I will go back to my PowerPoint here. Um, there's going to be a few nonsense slides I'll quick run through that we kind of talked about. Um, otherwise, I think we've got close to 10 minutes um, for questions that I'd be happy to answer. Emily and Jennifer, you can cut me off if we need to have some other announcements. Otherwise, I'd be happy to um, answer a few questions or jump back into any resources. Um, no, thank you, Brad. Um, we can wait for questions if anybody has any questions. Um, in the meantime, I'll just let you guys know that we will be um, putting the evaluation link in the chat box. Um, so if you guys could fill that out. 
Um, and then afterwards, we will be sending out um, the evaluation link, uh, the YouTube link, and then uh, you can add your stuff in there, Brad, that you want to send out to people. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Can I just add something real quick? Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, the evaluation report that uh, Brad works very hard on every year, um, when he does the interviews with our partners, um, he makes sure to send that information back to them, the success stories, so that we know that it's accurate and it's what they said. and. So we always run everything by our partners to make sure that um, everything is correct in those. And then we we kind of, if we have something wrong, we change it or we if it's, it's up to them. We make sure that, that we have their approval though before going forward. And then Brad revises what he needs to and then we work together and then he um, gives us that end of the year report. So just another step in there. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer, that's a good note. This is Geneva from Crib. I just have a quick question for you. Um, are those final, of like end of the year evaluation reports part of your work plan, something that you um, included in there as an activity? And then also could I get a, um, like a copy of some of those success stories to just kind of see your template? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I I think I heard you, and it may be a question for Jennifer, but just to repeat, um, is that final internal report a portion of the work plan worked out with CDC, and then um, is it possible to share some of the success stories? Is that right, Geneva? Yes. Yes, yeah. Can you guys hear me? I'm sorry, I'm having all kinds of technical issues. Hi, Geneva, sorry. Um, so I will double check on sharing it just because it has some of the partner's information. So I will double check on sharing that information. We do include that in our work plan just to have a report, an internal report every year. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. I, and I will double check on that and I will get back to you if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if you don't want to put personal information, just like a template of kind of what questions you're asking. Cause mm -hmm. Okay. Having... Yeah. That's great. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Anybody else have any questions? Or is that it for today? Okay, so um, if anybody's calling in, can you please give us your um, contact information um, so we can get the evaluation link and stuff emailed out? Um, okay. then, I'm calling in, but you already have my information. Okay. All right, so then I guess lastly, um, just join us for next month's community health webinar. Um, that's going to be on e-cigarettes presented by our tobacco health educator, Tara Huska. Um, and that's August 14th at 1 p.m. Mountain, Mountain time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great job, Brad. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody.